Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it is 4 o'clock, and we are here for our seminar on the National Core Art Standards in the Music Classroom. So welcome. This is Jackie Coleman. I'm the Education Consultant for the Arts with the Connecticut State Department of Education and also your host today. Today we are presenting the second part of our three-part series on the National Core Art Standards, and we will be focusing on the standards in the music classroom. Uh, we do have a couple of housekeeping things. Uh, please be aware that this webinar is being recorded, inclusive of the chat, which will be accessible on the Connecticut State Department of website later on. Um, and since we have such a good-sized group today, we will be taking all of your questions and comments through the chat. You can find the chat icon either on the top of your screen on the, um, on the right or at the bottom, or perhaps if you have a Mac, it might be in the middle and you need to toggle back and forth. You just need to click on it and it will open up and you can type in your comments and questions along the way. We will not be using the question and answer session section. Um, I do want to point out that we actually have a couple of call-in users who are not able to access the visuals, so I want to invite our call-in users, if you have questions or comments, to go ahead and email me um, at Jacqueline.Coleman at ct.gov. It was the, uh, in the bottom of the original email you got uh, reminding you of this webinar. And if you are having difficulty with your audio in any way, feel free to chat with me, um, and I will do my best to assist you resolving this issue. So at this point, I'd like to introduce you to our two amazing presenters today. First, we have Margaret Fitzgerald, currently serving as Teacher Leader in Residence with the Connecticut State Department of Education. And Margaret is also Curriculum Coordinator and Music Teacher with Brookfield Public Schools. While at the state, she has been working closely with the Connecticut Art Standards Review Teams to prepare recommendations to the Connecticut State Board of Education. Margaret is a consummate professional, having worked with all ages of students and teachers to bring music to the forefront of education. I'd also like to introduce you to Caroline Goldschneider, who is also serving as Teacher Leader in Residence with the State Department of Education. At the state, she is a part of developing and enhancing numerous teacher leader initiatives while also supporting arts learning projects. Caroline is a music teacher with the Windsor Lock Public Schools. She brings a vibrancy and dynamic perspective to her classroom and to her work with the state. We are extremely lucky to have these fine presenters with us today. And with that, I give you Margaret Fitzgerald and Caroline Goldschneider. Thank you, Jackie, for that lovely introduction. So we are indeed your super fun presenters for today, as I think you can see from the photo. Uh, my name is Caroline Goldschneider, and like Jackie said, I am teacher leader in residence at the Connecticut State Department of Education, and I also teach general music pre-K to second grade in Windsor Locks. Margaret? And I am Margaret Fitzgerald, and after that introduction, I don't think I can say anything else except, wow, that's me. I teach uh, in Brookfield, grade four general music and band, where I have a great time and have been learning an amazing amount of things uh, here at the State Department of Education, working with Jackie Coleman, our arts consultant for the state, and with Caroline. Thanks, Margaret. So this is Caroline again, and today we're just going to take you through a few examples of what the National Core Art Standards, or NCAS, can look like in the music classroom. Uh, but first, to situate ourselves, let's take a look at the broad NCAS picture. So what is the big shift that's happening with these new art standards? We know that we're moving from a skills-based approach to a concept-based approach, but what does that actually mean? Well, I like to think of it this way. We tend to teach the how of music, how to create, how to read, how to perform, how to respond, and how to connect. But with NCAST, we now add the why. Why do we create? Why do we perform? Why is it important to know the purpose, the intent, the cultural context of the music? Now, many of you already do the why in your classroom, but for others, this shift will require some changes in the, your curriculum. But please notice we are not taking away the how. The how is, of course, crucial to get to the why. We still need those skills. We're just giving our students the ability to answer broader questions like this. I asked this question of my first graders at the end of last year after having implemented components of NCAS. And notice what these six and seven-year-olds were able to communicate. 
the only word I helped them with was unique in the bottom right corner, but the rest was all generated by the students. And really, isn't this what we want students to take away, whether or not they become musicians? We want them to be able to express why the arts are important and become lifelong, artistically literate citizens. So now it's time for the first interactive portion of our webinar. Can you think of ways that you already incorporate the why into your curriculum? Take a moment to think about that and to type into the chat box. We would love for you to share your ideas with the group. So we are just waiting for some think time to let our participants consider why they would incorporate why and how they might incorporate why into the classroom and perhaps somebody might have a suggestion. But we have from Carrie, make connections to the community through performance. Thanks, Carrie. Another one? That's great. We'll give you more time to think. But as you're thinking about this shift, I'm going to pass it back over to Margaret, who's going to give a brief overview of the structure of NCAS. Well, there I was sitting in my living room thinking of the impending new national standards coming our way, reading the latest information that I could find wearing my Happy Huckleberry Band t-shirt. And I looked and I said, hmm, this NCAS stuff looks fabulous, but where do I even begin? to start. I don't know if any of you felt that way, but I know that that was weighing heavily on my mind going into this year. When I first looked at the NCAS site, I got, <clears throat> shall we say, a bit overwhelmed by all of the information held there. It's a great site, but wow, a lot of things. Anyone else feel that way? I can hear applause from over here. So I came up with a diagram to help me wrap my head around how the standards move from the artistic processes into my everyday instruction. Our Connecticut State Arts Consultant, Jackie Coleman, has done a webinar that goes into this in depth. If you would like to have more information about this, you can find the webinar on our Connecticut State Department of Education Arts homepage. So let's take a brief look at the NCAS pyramid that I've come up with that I think helps will explain this better. At the top are the four artistic processes. Just a note here, Connecticut is recommending the adoption of the NCAS platform as it stands, complete with all four artistic processes. Connecticut feels that it is very important for, Connecticut, for connecting to be a distinct process because it supports global connections beyond our own selves. Just as a word, NAFME has embedded connecting into the three remaining processes. So when you're using NAFME resources, which are fabulous, just be aware of that distinction. From the artistic processes come the 11 common anchor standards. These are overarching through all forms. Number four, select, analyze, and interpret artistic work for presentation is a very important one for us music people. Next in line on our way towards the effect of the top to the bottom in our instruction, we have the enduring understandings and essential questions written for each anchor standard. Just for an FYI, these are written in the language at the high school level and should be adapted for your grade level. Action verbs that are used to carry out each artistic process are found here in the process components. Words like select, refine, share, develop, compose, and on and on. These are the areas where our students grow in their ability over time to become independent, lifelong learners. Music places a great deal of emphasis on these process components. It's kind of where we live. Next in our pyramid of NCAS is what we do every day, our strands, high school band, general music, fourth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade chorus. There are five different strands of music instruction, that mean, uh, one called music, which means general music K through eight, composition and theory, music technology, harmonizing instruments, guitar, things like that, and finally, traditional and emerging ensembles where you will find band, chorus, orchestra. Note that there are five levels of ensembles. Novice is notated for beginning ensembles, intermediate for middle school ensembles, and the last three levels are for high school ensembles. The grid showing these ensembles can at first glance look like a rubric, but it's really kind of a chart indicating student growth over time from beginning to advanced. 
And ta-da, we have finally reached the grade level specific knowledge and skills area for each process component. The eagle has almost landed, but wait, there's more. Here we go, the tippy top of the pyramid of NCAS, or the beginning of our journey, the instruction that we plan for our students every day. This is where we are going to focus for the rest of this webinar, instruction. Thanks, Margaret, for that totally awesome summarization of the all-encompassing pyramid of NCAS. So now let's get down to instruction. Today I'm going to zoom in on this particular standard, again returning to my first graders. With limited guidance, demonstrate and identify expressive qualities, such as dynamics and tempo, that reflect creators and performers' expressive intent. Even though my examples are for first graders, I think you'll be able to see how this work can easily apply to higher grade levels. But first, let's quickly go through our pyramid of NCAS to figure out how we got to this standard. First, we have our biggie, respond. Next, our anchor standard, which in this case is anchor standard number eight. Then we have our relevant, enduring understanding and essential question. Next, our process component is interpret. There's the course we're teaching. And voila, there's our standard. Now I'm going to boil this down to instruction, what I do in my classroom to hit this standard. So when I have my young ones respond, I warm them up by engaging them in a hear, think, wonder thinking routine. I'm sure many of you have done this in your own classrooms. I play the piece of music several times and ask them to fill out this worksheet as best they can. For those who have trouble writing, I help them out or they can draw pictures. We start out with here. As you can see, this is a typical listening log. And this is first grade we're talking about, so we're only dealing with stark contrast. The older grades can get more subtle with tempo and dynamics and other musical terminology. Note that they should only write what they hear. There should be no opinion, subjectivity, or interpretation in this section. But then I take it a step further and we add the why. Here we get to the expressive intent piece in our standard. I gave them a guiding question because they're young, but you may find more creative and insightful answers in older grades if you leave think more open-ended. And then of course we have our wonder. I think that practicing how to ask good questions is crucial in any subject area. So it's good to practice even in music. I often remind my students that asking questions makes learning happen. It definitely takes practice though, so be prepared for some students to struggle with asking questions, but it's definitely important. Now again, the beauty of Hear, Think, Wonder is that you can easily use this thinking routine with any grade level. I've used it before as an adult, and I really have to say it engendered rich discussion and brought so many fascinating things to light. And so it's a great starting point for our response standard. And for those of you who are strapped for time, this thinking routine actually serves as great do now material. If you teach an ensemble, you can have your students take just the first five minutes of class to fill out a sheet. It's all about strategic planning and fitting in these standards in a natural, organic, but beneficial way. After completing our hear, think, wonder sheets individually and sharing our hears and thinks with our classmates, we piece everything together as a group to try to identify the composer's purpose or his or her intent. As you can see, using clues from the music and considering what story or feeling the composer was trying to communicate, my first graders were able to come up with these awesome and informed ideas. I then bring it back to the composer by sharing the historical and contemporary context of the piece. And again, with older grades, you can get much more in depth with music history. And we ask how successful Tchaikovsky was in expressing his intent. Once the respond part is complete, it's easy to make connections to some of our create and perform standards. We did a mini project where students had to communicate a feeling or story using only drums. They had to use dynamics, tempo, rhythm, and expression to convey their feelings or stories. In other words, they had to make clear their expressive intent. I then asked them to share when they might perform their drum solos, who would be their audience, and why. As you can see, one student who was conveying anger said he would play his piece when he got into a fight with his brother, which of course is a great time to talk about nonviolent solutions to problems, listening or playing music being one of them. But 
As you can see, there are many ways to naturally connect what you are already doing to reach some of those more conceptual standards. I also have an extension for students who need a challenge. They just write a little mini story, beginning, middle, and end, and play that with their drums. So I bet that many of you are already doing these types of things in your classroom. So you're already hitting these NCAS standards. And I'm curious to know, another interactive portion of our webinar, does this lesson connect to anything you already do in your classroom? Does it spark an idea for you? Can you think of ways to extend this lesson? You can just share your off-the-cuff ideas in the chat box. We would love to know and to hear from you. Caroline, I'm just so impressed with this. It connects to so much that already happens in regular classroom areas. I know that our teachers in the school system that I'm in use the See, Think, Wonder, and Read, Think, Wonder question prompts. So I could use this very easily in my general music or band classes and for here to think wonder they'd already know the process and I could really get down um, deep into what's going on with what they're feeling and, and all sorts of things like that. Thanks for the idea. And Suzanne has just typed in that she loves the Hear, Think, Wonder idea as well. And um, I just wanted to chime in here back on your why question earlier in the webinar. Judy commented, uh, it helps the chorus fit into the whole music ensemble and help them understand that. And Jill told us that students need to understand the purpose of the skills being taught or the why provides the opportunity for that. So I thought I would share that. Great. Thanks, Jackie. Um, so continue thinking about how this might spark ideas for you. I'm going to pass it back over to Margaret so that she can talk a little bit about the CREATE standard. Well, thanks very much, everyone, for your comments in the chat box. They are really helpful. Um, now we're going to move on to the performance ensemble piece of our time together today. I want to ground this first in the amount of time I have with my fourth graders because we're all concerned about that. In the school I teach at, band students get 30 minutes of instruction per week in a group setting and one 45-minute weekly rehearsal. It's way difficult to get everything done, especially this time of year in the concert season. Keeping that time crunch in mind, I thought we'd focus on creating today, since the inclusion of this one in ensembles is frequently of concern to directors. I am always in a time crunch for rehearsal time, lesson time, but I want my students to be artistically literate. So what is a band director to do? Well, careful, thoughtful planning goes a long way here to maximize a streamlined use of precious time. Moving on, we're going to focus on Anchor Standard 2 organize and develop artistic ideas and work with the essential understanding, essential questions and enduring understandings as listed here. Our process component for the student task that I designed our plan and make with the music strand and grade level coming next as we head further into the specifics of what creating in this lesson looks like, I should say series of lessons because it doesn't happen all at the same time. As we go through the NCAS pyramid, you can see that our lens is narrowing, fine-tuning things as we look towards the goal, the standards-based instruction. Oh, look, the blue. Ding. There we are. Let's see. It's our performance standard taken right from the NCAS platform, traditional ensembles, novice division, my fourth graders, and now drum roll, please. The most important part for my students, instruction. Through the cold water dive into the pyramid of NCAS, from the very broad to the specific, you can see the links back to the top that guide the instructional choices for our students. This kind of intentional planning, while carefully allotting my instructional resources, like time in my case, allows my kiddos to make connections to things that bring the music they are creating in bands to life for them. My bonus is that when they are in rehearsal, their performance is much more informed and refined. Hold on for a sec. Before we get to the instructional piece, I just want to mention something that NCAS is set up for traditional ensembles. You might notice that this states HS novice, which might look like high school novice. This page is for all novice traditional ensembles, like my fourth grade beginning band or your third grade beginning orchestra or my friend's beginning fifth grade chorus. Adapt this to the configuration in your district, city, or town. If you read through this slide, you can see all of the pieces of the pyramid of NCAS represented except for the instructional piece. You got all of it there except for the instructional piece, so let's move on to that. Well, my band is playing a piece 
this year in beginning band. That is the Might of Hercules. And due to computer error, we couldn't insert the sound clip of the Might of Hercules. But you can imagine what a fourth grade band playing the Might of Hercules might sound like. It's heavy, it's loud, it's proud. Well, during band rehearsal one day, we discussed the following. It took five minutes out of my rehearsal for this. Here are the questions that were asked. What's the rhythm of, and the melodic range of the band motive? Why do you suppose that the composer wrote it that way? How might you describe in words the characteristics of the hero the composer had chosen to represent? Then as a group, very loudly so that everyone could hear in that gym, we brainstormed personal or physical characteristics of who the motive really might represent if they were a superhero as opposed to the Greek hero that this piece was really about. Students were asked to tuck their ideas they found most relevant into their brains and plan to discuss them at their lessons this week. Total time, five minutes of rehearsal time. That was it. We discussed all sorts of things like dynamics, um, different ways of articulation. I am sure you can take this and run with it with things in your performing group. Well, this year I have been doing a very special incentive program stolen from Recorder Karate called in my inf infamous way of coming up with great names, that would be band karate. So the students have the incentive of getting a special belt for their belt collection held on a binder clip which is attached to their case when this is all complete. So I developed the B like Bach belt for composition in band. During their weekly lesson group that week, I reminded everyone of our short five minute discussion in band and took some ideas from the students just to ground them in what we had already done. Then I gave everyone a worksheet, which is listed here right on the website, or you can get it when you look at it, um, download for those who are listening on the phone. We discussed, um, I gave them a worksheet, and we had listed two characteristics we would like in a superhero of our own. We discussed how we might show those characteristics in our motive. Why would a person hearing the motive you created think that your superhero is fast, heavy, strong, has big feet, bad breath, or whatever? I took ideas for a rhythm for a sample superhero, put it on the board, and everyone picked their favorite note, and everybody played the rhythm together on their favorite note, loudly and proudly, and then softly and lightly as if we were flying. Then my students are instructed to bring their worksheet home to do. This took about eight minutes total of my lesson time, a total of about 15 minutes of instructional time between the rehearsal and the group lesson, invested for the development of compositional technique pride of work, sight reading experience, and a lot more, a bang for the buck if you ask me. The student's home assignment for this project is to write a mode of their own instrument that reflects the characteristics of their own superhero. After the papers are handed in, they get their Be Like Box belt. I copy them for everyone to play in the lesson group. Sometimes I even use these modems during our band concert when I say, would the trombone stand up and show everyone your instruments? Maybe I'll have them play their motive. Students love to share their work. Speaking of sharing student work, here's one example. This is Holly's motive for the flute. Her superhero, Wishwashi, she has all covered. I have bumped out for the belt levels. For example, she's a red belt. So you can see where these students are lesson-wise in the development of their playing. Their descriptive quotes totally crack me up. Sam, the man, has trumpets and laser beams going on in his motive. Sam is a brown belt boy, and he is all about the blur of speed. You should see him in action, let me tell you. That's his hero. Planning instruction this way assists my students in making all sorts of connections, including the ability to stylize their performance in a manner that reflects composer's intent or even realizing the composers had intent when they started out to write a piece. Take, taking a look at that, at that one performance standard, just one, just one performance standard and planning a realistic yet rich way to have my students experience composition and in band. I narrowed my view of the NCAS platform to that one standard, planted that seed in my instruction, hoping that my students would grow musically and artistically. That was my hope, that was my plan. How about the intentions of our webinar today? How about planting those seeds for you folks? Let's take a few minutes for questions and conversations. Great, thank you, uh, Caroline and Margaret. I wanted you to know you're getting a lot of comments about how cool the compositions are, uh, the superhero compositions are. 
Oh, they're a riot. When we have the whole group play, I, those, those of you who are listening probably do something like this already. What empowerment for the students who compose those to have their lesson group of eight or nine students perform their music. Everybody wants me to record it on my phone and email it to them so mom can hear. It is a great way to encourage and engage them, but I'm getting a total bang for my buck by doing that. So I'm, I'm hitting the standards, I'm engaging them, and it's just great fun. That's terrific. So attendees, please feel free at this point to chime in with comments or questions, um, any ideas or thoughts about what you'd like to know more about. We are also hoping to offer future webinars. Um, we know this is brief and sort of a quick snapshot, but please, we'd love to hear what's on your mind. I'd also be interested to see what people think about the NCAS pyramid looking upside down with the pointy end on instruction. It just made great sense to me, and I'm just interested in some feedback about how that resonated with you. This is Caroline again. Yes, I do have to say that Margaret came up with that pyramid of NCAS, and it so helped me organize all of the information that's in the NCAS website much better than the matrix. At least it works for me. Okay, it looks like we have uh, Judy commenting that the superhero lesson gives them the confidence to try and the encouragement to compose. You'll get some great improvisers in your future jazz bands. I'm very lucky because, this is Margaret again, I'm very lucky because I get to teach general music fourth grade and band fourth grade, and I think it's so key that these students become artistically literate, and just giving them a pointy-headed education in one genre of music is not going to do that. And that's what the standards are all about, the broad artistic literacy of these students and lifelong learners. And I think anyone could adapt any of these ideas or dovetail on them in their own way, adapt them for their own students to get you know, to get them really on fire and for you to dip your toe into the NCAS waters. You're getting some very positive feedback about the upside down pyramid, which is very exciting. Um, I see that we have just a couple of minutes left, so I want to encourage anyone who has any final questions to type them in the chat. Um, again, also suggestions for potential future webinars or things that you may have to share. I did note that we had a few people comment that they may have something to share. Um, and I would like to ask Caroline and or Margaret to comment on um, their understanding of the current status of the standards and if teams were going to be working this summer on on rewriting their, their music curriculum, you know, should they go ahead and use the standards? What, what's happening with all of that? That's Absolutely. an excellent question. <laughs> is Caroline, why don't you take that? <laughs> I think we could both answer this in our sleep, but I'll take the first part of that at least. Um, mm -hmm. So our standards are being presented to the Board of Education in the fall. However, we do have a draft position statement up online on the CSDE website on the arts homepage there. And this position statement really reflects how Connecticut is going to implement these standards and what is Connecticut going to do to adopt these standards in its own special way. So we have that up on the website, so I encourage you to take a look at that. But um, knowing what we know and knowing the positive feedback we've gotten from parent groups and from teachers and from administrators, it looks like um, it's very hopeful that we will be adopting the standards. So I would say that if you are writing curriculum this summer, to go ahead and start incorporating some of these NCAS standards into your curriculum. And I think it will be worthwhile to you. I just see such pride in my students when they're doing some of these more conceptual things. Margaret, is there anything you wanted to add? Well, I'm, yeah, I've got 36 years experience in, in music education at this point, so I'm an oldie, but kind of goodie. And I love learning new things. This for me has been a real trip, but I think the best and the most incredible thing that I see is that my students are thinking for themselves. They're owning this information and taking it and running from it, running for, running towards it. They are really making the shift a lot easier than I am. And when I look at, at all of the different subject areas that we teach, everyone is making this kind of shift from skills-based to conceptual-based um, curricula and programs. And, and I really think that the arts 
can be the forefront of this. Where, where else does this kind of live almost by nature? So I'm very excited about the NCAS standards and very excited that Connecticut is hopefully going to be adopting them. Thank you both for, uh, for those comments. And I am actually going to type in the um, link to get to register for the CAAA Art Summer Institute. Would you guys uh, please just share with, with the group here another opportunity for professional development if they're interested? Oh, sure. Let me take this one. The Connecticut uh, Arts Administrators Association is going to be hosting in July a week-long um, workshop intensive workshop on curriculum writing and incorporating the new standards. It's held at Fairfield University, and it's taught by top-notch instructors, Dee Hansen, Kim Yannon, I could go on and on. It's, it's uh, garnered a lot of great feedback from people who have attended in the past, and, and this is probably a really good year to get on board with uh, making curriculum shifts in your district. So that's a fabulous opportunity. Great, the link uh, is there, and you can also find it by Googling CAAA. So I think we are at the end of our session. Um, I want to make sure we honor your time. We really appreciate everybody being here today. And thank you, Emil Kopja, a special shout out because you actually couldn't get on the WebEx, but I just saw your email come through. So thank you for hanging in with us. Um, and we are going to stay on for about another five or ten minutes or so if you would like to chat. Um, and other than that, i um, going to stop the recording at this point, and we will email you with the links to this webinar, the past webinar, and our visual arts one coming up, next, coming up next week with our fantastic Jill Goldberg and Julie Sawyer. So thank you all so much for being here, and uh, thank you so much, Margaret and Caroline, for the fine work you're doing. Thank you, thank Jackie, you. and thank you, everyone, for attending. I'd love to hear more from you. I second that. It's, it's Margaret. Get your toes wet. Get into that. Start a little bit at a time. It's going to be fabulous. Thank you so much. Great. I'm going to mute us all, but we can continue to chat in the chat section.